Hey guys, I'll be taking a look at the latest polls for the 2022 midterms. So I'm going to start off by filling in all of these solid states on the 2022 map. So these states, there's really not going to be too many polls out of these states because they're just so solid for the incumbent party. So all of these states, they will not flip in 2022. Colorado, the same thing. The margin may not be the most solid, but it's very, very unlikely that Colorado goes to a Republican in two years. And then for the Republican Party, they have quite a few solid seats as well. Most of the South will all be solid for the Republican Party. And so get this gives the Republicans 43 seats to the Democrats with 46. Now, taking a look at the latest polls for the midterms, you have this one up here. Uh, you have Nelson versus Ron Johnson. Ron Johnson, of course, the Republican incumbent in 2022. It's unclear currently as to whether or not Ron Johnson will run for a third term in 2022. But currently, he is pulling behind Nelson. But the interesting thing here is that Tom Nelson only has the fourth highest chance at actually winning that nomination, nor has his chances ever been high. So it's surprising why they pulled him against Ron Johnson, but... As for Ron Johnson, him being the GOP nominee is currently at 63 cents. And so the interesting thing here is that, you know, he hasn't even announced anything. He did say that his preference was that he would ret retire in 2022, but things are still pretty unclear as to whether or not uh, Ron Johnson will run again. I think definitely it'll be, it'll be better for the GOP if Ron Johnson does run again. He is you know, able to win Wisconsin by pretty strong margins. He won in 2010 when the state of Wisconsin was pretty solidly red, uh, blue for Barack Obama. In 2008, Obama won Wisconsin by 13.9%, but Ron Johnson just two years later in 2010 won that election for the Senate. So Ron Johnson definitely is pretty strong in Wisconsin, and Republicans do want him to run again in 2022. And the, so the betting odds right now for Wisconsin, they're pretty even. They're basically around 52-48 in favor of the GOP, but I think if Ron Johnson does drop out and not run in 2022, the Democrats will have that higher chance because, of course, in 2020, this was a Biden state, and Wisconsin, it does elect many Democrats. It does elect many Republicans as well, but... I think that the Democratic base can definitely defeat a newcomer that is a Republican. So I think that if Ron Johnson does not run, it'll be pretty difficult for him. But right now, the Democrats do seem to be polling in front of him, which I do think is pretty interesting. Now, the next poll I want to take a look at, uh, this one is from the 2020 race. It was just put in very, very late by 538. But taking a look at a bunch of the Ohio polls, I think this really is really, really interesting here. So the state of Ohio, you have currently the incumbent Rob Portman who announced that he would be retiring, and I think that is terrible for the GOP. Rob Portman was able to win in Ohio, win in Senate races by pretty strong margins, and he would not be seeking, I believe, a fourth term now in Ohio. So Ohio will not, you know, have an incumbent in 2020. Two, and so, uh, you know, the Republicans and Democrats will both have primaries here. The Democratic frontrunner currently by far is Tim Ryan, who is a representative from the state. And of course, he also ran for president in 2020. So he does have the highest name recognition. As you can see, Tim Ryan, 79 cents per share. Everyone else, you know, the second person is at four. Amy Atkin did have a pretty good chance, but she did drop out of the race, I believe, for health reasons. So she did drop out a couple of days ago on the 6th of March. As you can see, it went from 28 down to 1. So basically, her chances fell overnight for Amy Acton. And so that's why, you know, the polls here show Amy Acton was the one that did better than Tim Ryan. And I do think that Tim Ryan is a pretty weak nominee for the Democratic Party, even in Ohio, his home state. As for the Republicans, there are three main Republicans. Uh, you have J.D. Vance, Jane Timken, and Josh Mandel. So Timken and Vance are currently the two that seem to be doing the best out of all the candidates. Um, Timken was actually doing a pretty good just a while ago, but her chances have slipped quite a bit. And J.D. Vance now has a pretty good chance at winning this nomination. And so... Looking at the polling numbers, they all defeat Tim Ryan, but currently Josh Mandel actually does the best, then Jane Timken, and then J.D. Vance. But I think that in Ohio, the polls have you know definitely been underestimating the Republicans in Ohio. I mean, the polling was actually in favor of Joe Biden in 2020, but Trump won Ohio by 8% on election night. So definitely, the polling does skew in favor of the Republicans 
Democratic Party here. So these polls, I do expect the Republicans actually to be doing even better. And I don't think that Acton was ever leading over any of these Republicans in Ohio. So Ohio currently with Tim Ryan being essentially the presumptive nominee. The polling does look very, very good for the Republicans. And this is a seat that is really, really unlikely to flip. Ohio has just become so red after Donald Trump has taken office in 2017. So those are the polls in Ohio. You saw six of them. They were all between the two presumptive Democrats at the time. And then the three leading Republicans, the three leading Republicans are essentially the same. And Tim Ryan right now is basically a shoe in for that nomination. I, I don't think it'll go well for him. He is from a really red state. He may be more popular than others in Ohio, but he's still a Democrat at the end of the day. And I think that that will definitely hurt him a lot. So it's really these top three polls that you have to worry about. These bottom three are irrelevant because Atkin has dropped out. Now, there are also quite a few polls from Georgia. These were done by Trafalgar Group. Uh, definitely not a great pollster, but polls in Georgia do tend to be more accurate than pollster than polls in other states. Now, Trafalgar, they did still overestimate the Republicans in the 2021 runoffs for the two Georgia Senate races with Warnock and Ossoff running against Leffler as well as Purdue. So right now, Raphael Warnock, of course, he in 2021 Georgia, he won Georgia by around 2%, so a much larger margin than Joe Biden's. But in Georgia, he did win a runoff race, which um, means that there's only two candidates, uh, so it's easier for him to get over 50% of the vote. And on top of that, he ran against a pretty weak incumbent. Now, Warnock, I think he was definitely a good a contender for the race. I think that if someone weaker was running, they definitely would not win. It's not just because he was a Democrat. I think just him being himself, I think definitely did have a role in Warnock's defeat of Leffler in 2021. But, you know, he is in trouble in 2022. It's a year that is expected to favor the Republican Party. Republicans just turn out more in general, and it's expected to be a wave year for them because the Democrats just took control of the government. However, there's a chance the Democrats do well with COVID-19, and they essentially make it so that the effects of this red wave coming back at them will be a little bit weaker. I do think that it's pretty likely that the Democrats will not, not receive as large of a red wave as they saw in 2010 and 2012. I mean, the Republicans started taking over everything after Obama won in 2008 by his landslide. I mean, they had 58 seats in the Senate, almost enough to completely just ignore the filibuster for those two years. That's why Obamacare got passed so quickly. And that is why after Barack Obama took office, after his first couple of years, he essentially could not do anything. So Joe Biden is scrambling to get everything done before these midterms as he currently controls the entire government. So the races in Georgia, I think they will be a little bit difficult for the Democrats, but right now, Raphael Warnock is still pulling ahead of his possible Republican opponent. Uh, and then for Raphael Warnock, of course, um, he does have to win a majority. I think there's a very high chance that this goes to a runoff again. He does have to win a majority of the vote in Georgia. Uh, it cannot just be a plurality. And, you know, this really is a racist policy. Uh, because, you know, you can have a bunch of uh, black candidates running against one white candidate, or no, no um, not like that. You can have a bunch of white candidates running against one black candidate, and the black candidate gets, I mean, the black vote gets around 30, 40%, and they win because all the white candidates so basically split up their votes. But if you add up all the white candidates' voters, uh, you would, you know, they would still win. So that's why, you know, there are, there is a runoff system, and that's why that runoff system is, you know, really prevalent in the South. You see it in states like Louisiana as well, and Georgia. So, uh, you know, it's not that great of a system, you know, it should be abolished, but right now, you know, it's still the system that they're using, and Warnock was actually able to benefit pretty well, and John Ossoff in 2021. So it definitely backfired for the Republicans, but Warnock does lead over Leffler by five points. He, that's the person that he defeated. There's no way Leffler is a nominee again. I think the Republicans are just going to abandon her. Uh, then here you have uh, Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker, he is a former NFL player. And, you know, Georgia seems to like that. And he is the only one that's leading over Warnock. But people know him less. He's not really a politician. And yet, so I think that... I think that definitely he'll get less popular once people get to know a little bit more about him, but he will be running as a Republican. And then uh, Doug Collins, he is the one that, of course, caused that runoff. He got 20% of the vote. Kelly Loeffler got 25, and Warnock got around 33 in the general election, which is why there was that runoff. Nobody got over 50. Nobody even got close to 50%. And then for Doug Collins, of course, he came in third, and so he is currently the presumptive nominee for that. Um, he currently has 48 cents a share. Herschel Walker's chance have gone up because when he was asked whether or not he would rerun, he told people to 
uh, stay tuned. So uh, I think that there's a pretty good chance that Herschel Walker does run in 2022, but I do think that Doug Collins will still probably defeat him, even if Herschel Walker uh, does run. You have Brian Kemp here as well. I think the state of Georgia has just been an absolute disaster for the GOP and will continue to be a disaster for them. I mean, this is a state that the Democrats have not won since the 2000s. It's, no, not since 2000, since 1992. The last Democrat to win this was Bill Clinton in 1992. So it's been a very, very long time since Georgia has been uh, blue. And I mean, this really is an issue um, for the Democratic or for the Republican Party. They lost the two Senate seats here as well. And in 2022, they are not going to win the governorship. If Stacey Abrams run against Brian Kemp again for the governorship, it is very, very unlikely that you know Brian Kemp wins. He has alienated, you know, he has alienated. I mean, Democrats, Republicans, everyone. Um, pretty much nobody likes him in the state. <laughs> so I think that for Brian Kemp, he's going to have a lot of trouble with his reelection in you know less than a year in 2022. And the Stacey Abrams being so popular with the Democratic Party. I mean, it's I think that she had a huge role, at, you know, in flipping the state on the Senate and presidential levels. So Doug Collins, 48 cents a share. He's currently the presumptive nominee. As for the matchup, it's currently 53-48. The Democrats have held that advantage throughout the entire uh, past 90 days, uh, but it stayed pretty even. It's still, you know, not a race that the Democrats have any sort of, you know, a huge advantage in. But I think that with Warnock being the incumbent, states do typically like incumbents, and I think that'll definitely help the Democratic Party there. So that's a state in which the Democrats are currently doing a little bit better in, I would say, uh, just because, you know, Herschel Walker is not expected to be the nominee, but definitely things could change over the next couple of months. And then in New Hampshire, this is a, a really interesting race. You have Maggie Hassan versus Chris Nunu. Now, Chris Nunu has not announced, but he's pretty much signaled that he probably is going to run. And I think that there's a very good chance that he does. And I think that 2022, again, will be a very good chance for him to run for the Senate because he was just reelected in 2020 with 65% of the vote. This was a state in which Joe Biden won by seven points. Biden won 52%. Trump won 45% of the votes here. But Chris Nunu, running for re-election, won 65 percent of the vote now of course if you if he ran against a stronger candidate in new hampshire like maggie Hassan, i think you know he's definitely not going to win 65 percent of the vote but he does have a pretty good chance at winning and currently he is pulling higher than maggie Hassan. i do think that after sununu gets into the race uh she, he will actually do a little bit worse than he is now that plus two but the latest polls from the university of new hampshire show Hassan. i mean leading by huge margins over other uh, Republicans, but against Ayat and Sununu, she is doing worse. Now, Kelly Ayat, she is basically the person that Hassan defeated in 2016, defeated her by around 0.2% Maggie Hassan in 2016, and Ayat was the incumbent. So Maggie Hassan won by, you know, a very narrow race against Kelly Ayat, and so she is still pulling in front of her, which is good for her, but Kristen Nunu is going to be the big challenge for her. I think that if Kelly Ayat is a nominee, I don't think she's going to win, but Kristen Nunu definitely has much more appeal to the voters in New Hampshire. So this is going to be an issue for them. This other poll, um, if I can find a little bit lower, there's another one that shows that um, Kristen Yu was actually leading by six points over Maggie Hassan. Um, I'm not sure if I can find. Oh, it's right here. Okay, yeah. So this poll right here is so Nunu plus six over Maggie Hassan. But uh, the race is it's going to get closer. And I think that definitely it's not going to be like 2020 where Jean Shaheen won by 15 points. Uh, so those are the polls in New Hampshire, and currently the Republicans are doing a little bit better there. I do think that the Democrats do still have a higher chance at winning, as you can see, 58-43. Uh, you know, they do have the incumbency factor, and most things are in their favor, except for the fact that Chris Nunu is strong in New Hampshire. The state did go to bottom by seven points, and, you know, Maggie Hassan basically does better than every single Republican except for Chris Nunu. And so another one that I think is pretty interesting, this is uh, in Vermont, Patrick Leahy is polling behind Scott here, and I think that that's really interesting to take a look at. This was in 2020, uh, so this is, you know, really, really old, but Leahy will be up for re-election in 2022. He, he is currently the president pro tempore. Uh, I don't think he's not going to lose. It's New Hampshire. Um, and then finally, the last poll I want to take a look at here, these are all the Georgia polls so for all the runoffs. As you can see, they were pretty accurate. I mean, Warnock plus four, Ossoff plus five, those are, you know, outliers. But most of them, it's just plus one, plus two for both of them. So these polls were really accurate in Georgia. Um, but taking a look at the poll in New Hampshire, or not New Hampshire, Missouri. So this is... Uh, you know, earlier this year in early January, and this was that was when the poll was conducted. And you have Roy Blunt, who is the Republican incumbent 
in Missouri. I think he's a really, really weak candidate. And so currently, the Republicans have an 89 cent share winning here. Roy Blunt has announced that he is retiring as the incumbent, and I think that's a pretty good decision for him. I, you know, I think he doesn't want to leave losing the state. Uh, you know, remember this was a state in which in 2018, Claire McCaskill was defeated by Josh Hawley by over 10 percentage points. But in 2016, Roy Blunt won re-election with 49.2% of the vote to Jason Kander's 46.4%. And 2010 wasn't much better for him. Roy Blunt, uh, actually, no, it was much better for them. Okay, um, did not expect that. But uh, Roy Blunt, definitely um, not a strong candidate in Missouri. Uh, he's pretty unpopular there. You know, only won 49% of the vote. I mean, Donald Trump in, 2000, in 2016 even, I mean, 2016, Trump won... Missouri by 18 points. Roy Blunt wins it by three points. So, you know, less than three points. So I think that definitely it'd be good for the GOP. I think it's a good thing that he's retiring um, and they do have a really good chance at winning this race. And it's been pretty consistent over the last, uh, you know, couple of days. So uh, this is definitely a good sign for the Democrats in Missouri because they have some pretty bad nominees there. Eric Greens is one of the main nominees in Missouri. And I'll try to find the odds here if I can. Uh, for the state of Missouri. So Eric Greens is the former governor of the state. He resigned due to sexual harassment allegations. So ba he basically he had to resign. As you can see, his chances are pretty high, 37 cents per share that Greens wins the nomination. I think that if he wins the nomination, you know, his chances have been skyrocketing. He's a Trump Republican, and if he wins this nomination, I think it will be pretty sad for the GOP. The margin will be pretty small, because last time you saw someone like that run was Roy Moore, and he lost to Doug Collins, or Doug Jones, in Alabama. So, you know, even though it's a red state, if you nominate someone that people don't like, uh, you know, if they have sexual harassment allegations and stuff like that, it will still be pretty difficult for you to win. Um, so Eric Greens, definitely, he's the one that Democrats want, um, but he's the one that has, you know, the highest chance of losing for the GOP, but he has a high, high chance at winning in the GOP. He'll just have trouble getting independence, which is really what he needs to win in 2022. So in the state of Missouri, it still does benefit the Republicans just by a little bit as of right now. So these are the polls that we've seen so far from these five states. These are all definitely key states. Ohio, Missouri, a little bit less than these other three, but Georgia, Wisconsin, New Hampshire, these are really, really important races. Right now in Pennsylvania, John Fetterman is doing really, really well. Uh, he is the lieutenant governor. He's a really big guy. And um, definitely, this is a race that definitely favors him right now uh, for John Fetterman. He, he has an over 60% chance of winning the race right now just because of how strong of a candidate he is. In North Carolina, it still does benefit the Republicans a little bit more. Florida as well. Marco Rubio pretty much expected to win re-election. Iowa, it's going to be red. Uh, whether or not Chuck Grassley runs for re-election right now. But in Nevada and Arizona, the Democrats are still favored in those two races as of right now. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Today we, take, took, today we took a look at the uh, first polls for the 2022 midterms. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you liked it. Uh, like, my, like this video if you enjoyed it as well. Uh, comment down below who you think will win the 2022 midterms, the Democrats or the Republicans, and in these specific races as well. Join my Discord server if you haven't. We have a pretty cool mock government on there. So make sure to join that if you have not. The link which is, is at the very top of the description below. Thank you guys again so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.